my uh, fun responsibility to pivot us into the official welcoming remarks. So we're here. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, so I bet some of you are, some of you I think um, know me from, you know, it's, it's been uh, a number of years that uh, I've been in and around the HowlRound world, but some of you are like, who is this chick and why is she speaking? So uh, I am pleased to introduce myself. I'm Ronnie Pinoy, she, hers. Uh, I am Laguna Pueblo and Cherokee, as I mentioned earlier, and I am the interim executive director uh, for the Office of the Arts, as well as the uh, director of artistic programming for uh, Arts Emerson. And um, I'm gonna pick up my notes because you all don't want me to completely speak extemporaneously because then we'll be here all day. <laughs> so uh, I'm, uh, so the Office of the Arts that I have the, um, uh, the privilege of being in an interim position with encompasses Arts Emerson. It encompasses the incredible work of the HowlRound Theater Commons, uh, whose leadership and care you're seeing uh, on display day after day uh, over this weekend. Um, and we also steward uh, seven theatrical venues on campus for the benefit of our Emerson community and for the Boston community at large. So that's what we do at Office of the Arts. So for the past 10 years, the Latinx Theater Commons, LTC, has been an integral flagship program for us here at HowlRound. We couldn't be more proud and excited to be with you today and to just embrace you and welcome uh, being here in space with us. I also need to take a moment to acknowledge uh, the most incredible partner I have at the Office of the Arts, the most wonderful interim senior director of OA, associate vice president and director of the HowlRound Theater Commons, Jamie Galoon. So everyone give her a big round of applause, please. So, uh, Y'all know she loves you because she is officially on parental leave, but just you know, couldn't let a 10-year anniversary of the Latinx Theater Commons pass by without making an appearance. So big love, so grateful that you're here, and thank you for all the ways um, that we're sharing leadership together. So uh, I also want to just take a moment to say that for, for me, HowlRound, and especially the LTC, feels like the, um, the cousins who, uh, you know, who you would kind of like um, uh, grew up in the same neighborhood with, that you kind of have the same childhood memories, and you kind of grew up together uh, and have school stories, and now you're in your teenage years going, oh man, did I really wear that? Um, <laughs> so uh, my, uh, years ago, um, uh, I first met, I mean, many folks in this room at Arena Stage, and uh, that was really the birthplace of, of HowlRound and of relationship and such an education for me. I mean, Karen Zacharias in this room really taught me how to be a producer. Um, hopefully I learned okay. <laughs> and uh, so many individuals in this room are, uh, are, are, are just shaping, uh, not even as ind individuals, but as a collective, uh, shaping the conversation that we're having in the American theater field. And, sharing what it looks like to operate not from a position of singular leadership, but through a commons model. So it, this work is incredibly personal to me. It feels like it's, uh, it has educated me, and now I just could not feel uh, so, I feel so privileged to be in the position of getting to say, oh yeah, as part of the work that I get to support now in this position, that this is part of that work. It just feels like coming full circle. So thank you for your work because the field needs it, we need it, and we're so happy to be here for you. Uh, so I also just want to say, um, you know, so that it just goes, it is, is it is explicitly said that to watch HowlRound and Latinx Theater Commons grow together to what it is today, consistently upholding values of generosity and abundance, community and collaboration, diverse aesthetic, equity, inclusivity and accessibility and global citizenship has been such an honor. And I really wanted to make sure I didn't leave out any one of those things. Uh, lastly, what I'll say is that I know for our students at Emerson College, having the opportunity to engage with HowlRound and uh, with, how, with that, the incredible work that the LTC is doing uh, has just been uh, integral to their education and understanding what is the field that they are really going into. Like this is the, this is the work, this is the world, you are the world. Uh, and I think that is just such a, an incredible value to students, and uh, I got to see it firsthand this semester uh, with the HowlRound uh, seminar that is continuing to be taught, which I'm so uh, delighted is happening. Um, and as I like, make sure that I come on, get get to the next page. Next, next. 
Anyway, um, I know what I want to say. So the work that's happening here, it's field-wide. It is having resonance here at the college, in classes, in the fabric of everything we do every day at Arts Emerson, because what is written about at HowlRound is the reflection of the people working in the theater, not even just in this country, but beyond. And this is really modeling the future. So I can't thank you all enough. Please know how um, aggressively we love you and want you to feel good and be hosted. So if there's anything you need, I hope you don't hesitate uh, to let us know. And um, it is, in fact, my incredible honor um, to welcome a special guest we have today just to uh, really convey to you the degree of um, support uh, that we have at every level for the work that you all are doing. It, it's my incredible pleasure uh, to introduce Emerson College's, Emerson College's president, Jay Bernhardt, who's gonna share a few brief remarks, um, but uh, I am so honored to have him with us today uh, to welcome you all. So with that, Jay, thank you so much. Thank you, Rani, uh, and we really appreciate you being here, and we're, we're honored that you help us model the future and where we need to go, so thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today, and good afternoon. One of the really exciting uh, honors I have as president of Emerson College is to come together for events like this once in a while, to really, on behalf of the institution and our history since 1880 through the present and our many years into the future, it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all here today on behalf of all of our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends. Uh, and to welcome many of you back to Emerson, because I know many of you have been here before, and many of you may have been here 10 years ago when this incredible program was kicked off. Uh, I understand this is the 10th anniversary. Not everything gets to 10 years, uh, I will share. And so it is quite a milestone, and one you really should celebrate, and we celebrate with you to make it to 10 years to celebrate this moment. Uh, I want to start by thanking Ronnie Pernoy for her leadership uh, bringing us today, together today. Thank you, Ronnie, for your great work. It was uh, incredibly, this was my first smudge ceremony uh, and a quite moving experience, I'm sure, for many of you too. Uh, for those of you who know me well, smudge is usually what I have on my shirt. Um, and so this was a very deeply spiritual activity. I'm glad we could bring that with us today and hope we can do that more. Um, I want to thank Jacqueline Flores and Abigail Vega, who spearheaded this celebration. And I particularly want to thank Jamie Galoon for coming back with us today and for your leadership and vision for HowlRound for so long. Uh, the Latinx Theater Commons really does do incredible work. It amplifies Latinx stories and voices in theater. So thank you for all that you do to advocate for equity in, in the arts and to ensure that Latinx stories and narratives are reflected in theater and in performance. Your work over the last 10 years has been critical to this endeavor. Your work for the next 10 years and far beyond is even more important. So thank you for that. We're truly honored uh, for our role to be your host and hope you have a terrific event uh, through the weekend. Here's to another decade and more of discussion, of deliberation, and of disruption. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you everyone. Um, all right, let's continue the fun. Um, hola a todes, bienvenidas. My name is Jacqueline and I am the LTC producer. <laughs> Again, welcome to the Latinx Theater Commons 10th anniversary convening. It's an honor to wear the producer hat for this movement and to serve you all in this capacity. Over the weekend, you will hear from many people, so I'm going to model how we will be introducing ourselves and how we encourage you to introduce yourself. We will be using the following format, names, pronouns, if you, if you choose to use them, and then what was your entry point to the LTC? This can be when you joined the Facebook group, when you read a Latinx theater, content article on HowlRound, when you attended your first convening, anything in between. So again, my name is Jacqueline Flores, my pronouns are she, her, ella, and my entry point to the LTC was when I wrote about it in my college senior thesis in 2017. Wow. 
For those that don't know, the LTC stands for the Latinx Theater Commons. We are a commons, which means we are a digital, virtual, and public square. By being part of this event, you are a member of the commons. If you post on our Facebook page, read a piece about Latinx Theater on HowlRound, you are a member of the commons. Anyone with anything to say or do related with Latinx theater that chooses to use our public square is a member of the commons. There are no dues, there is no acceptance process. If you're here, you're in the commons and we're so happy you're here. A commons is a resource owned by no one that benefits everyone. In a commons, we all manage these resources. And in the LTC, our resources are managed by a steering and advisory committee. The LTC uses a horizontal rather than vertical power structure. Our programming is decided and curated by a steering committee of 38 people with a little help along the way from yours truly. And the steering committee is made up of volunteers who believe in the mission of the LTC and help continue to push it forward. The LTC also has an advisory committee made of 48 members and the advisory committee is for those who have served on the LTC steering committee before and who I am grateful to lean on for guidance and advice. If you are part of the LTC steering or advisory committee, can you please stand or wave? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for your work and commitment to the LTC. If this is your first convening with the LTC, or if you want to learn more about what we do and how, please go up to any of these wonderful people, introduce yourself, and start a conversation. They are also all the ones with the blue name tags, so they're easy to spot. Um, 10 years ago, <laughs> I was a senior in high school. Grab, okay, <laughs> no. Okay, the hold for laughter was not in my script, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I was grappling with what to major in college, and when I was a kid, I told my mom that I wanted to be a billionaire when I grew up. So naturally, I chose to major in theater. I will forever be indebted to the artists and change makers who gathered in DC and dared to imagine a world that did not yet exist so that future generations could not only reach glass ceilings, but break them. And so that a Latina like me could one day stand in front of all of you under shattered glass. In 2017, I attended TCG's National Conference in Portland, Oregon, where the LTC was awarded the Peter Seisler Award. I sat in the audience as the LTC producer, Abigail Vega, said, <laughs> the LTC was created to make our own table instead of waiting to be invited to join one. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to now get to see this work firsthand and to have worked so closely with Abigail over the last year, but over the past few years, as a convening champion. Abigail? <laughs> hey. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. I, uh, I'm Abigail Vega, she, her. Uh, and my entry point to the LTC was that I uh, came to the first convening here in Boston. It's been an honor to champion this convening along with eight, <laughs> eight other volunteer co-champions. Um, so as I call your name, I want you to raise or, uh, raise or wave your hand as you're able. Rise or wave your hand as you're able um, and keep it up. And we're gonna hold our applause till the end. I also wanna acknowledge that we have people who are on flights that are delayed or they're coming in later and they're just gonna come in and that's awesome and we don't need to like, it's great, We're just if you have a seat next to you, tell them to sit next to you. So some of these folks are not quite here yet, but they will be here soon. So our convening design co-champs, Lisa Portes and Pedro Chamale. I, 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 I got a hold, we got a hold, sorry. <laughs> Where, where's Pedro? Okay, great. Our matchmaking co committee co-champs, Tiffany Vega Gibson and Laura Moreno. Our host committee co-champions, Kevin Becerra and Natty Justiano. 
and our social committee co-champs, Jay-Z Marrero and Juliana Kleiss Mendez. Yay, each of these folks were joined by others. So if you worked on any of their four committees, please also rise or wave your hand as you're able so we can see you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now we can clap. As Jacqueline shared, the LTC is administered and led by a producer, but peopled with volunteers passionate not only about Latinx theater, but about stewarding our unique resources towards interventions that other organizations and institutions often cannot. When the LTC selects a project to work on, we ask, our, we ask ourselves, is this our work to do? Are we uniquely positioned, more than any other company or institution, to do this work? 10 years ago, I was the 76th participant of a 75 person convening, convening <laughs> right here in this room. I w if we're telling, we're telling on our ages, I was barely two years into my professional career. I came here with Alex Vela, she was invited and, and, and I had a hotel room with her. And so I said, well, can you email Howrand and say, uh, I'll stay in your room and I don't eat very much. And then she did that. <laughs> and they were like, don't be crazy, just come. <laughs> um, I was young, I was hungry, I was wrinkle free, and, <laughs> and I was also already jaded by what I saw as the stickiness of the institutional gears in our field. And then the LTC. The LTC as a movement has no imperative to continue but for the passion of its steering committee and people like you who gather, who seek community, and who enter into conversations with generosity and who ask not, what will those people over there do, but what will we do together? This gathering is like no other, and this room will never gather again. This room was built for all of us to move forward together. And so for the next three days, we invite you to co-create the best kind-hearted, fun, and honest room possible. Let us not talk around the issues, but name the roadblocks with acknowledgments that most likely we all want the same things. So how will we get there together? We often start our convenings with some form of intention setting. So I'd like us all to take a moment, and if you feel safe and comfortable, close your eyes. And over the next 60 seconds, we're just gonna breathe. Next, I don't know, 15 seconds, we're just gonna breathe together. <laughs> you will breathe for the next three days, but for the next 15 seconds, I'm gonna ask you to inhale together and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And one more time, inhale and exhale. And in your mind, I'm gonna invite you to set an intention in silence and ask yourself that question. What will we do together this week? When your intention is set, take one more final breath. Hold on to that over the next couple of days. Thank you so much. Jacqueline, back to you. Thanks, Abigail. As Abigail and I have shared, this movement is the result of individuals with an undeniable passion for change and the will to transform and disrupt structures. And to continue my analogy, glass ceilings aren't shattered alone. So I would like to introduce you all to one of the original co-conspirators of the LTC and Garcia Romero. I have, yes, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna clap for her. Um, I have the distinct pleasure to work with Anne as part of the Fornes Institute. She is also a playwright, translator, and scholar, 
and the co-editor of the forthcoming volume, Maria Irene Forness, in context that contextualizes Forness's life and work, which will be published digitally this summer. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, it's such a joy to be here to see all of your amazing faces. It's just extraordinary. Um, I have the great pleasure to introduce Karen Zacarias. I'm going to read for about five minutes. I've timed it. It's five minutes. Um, and then you'll hear from our wonderful Karen. So Karen Zacarias is an award-winning playwright. She was one of the top 20 most produced playwrights of 22-23 in the United States. Her plays include Destiny of Desire, Native Gardens, The Copper Children, The Book Club Play, Legacy of Light, Mariela in the Desert, The Sins of Sor Juana, as well as adaptations of... The Age of Innocence, Just Like Us, Into the Beautiful North, and How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents. She's the author of 10 renowned TYA musicals and the brightest of several ballets. Her plays have been produced at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, Arena Stage, Goodman Theater, Roundhouse Theater, Denver Center, Alliance Theater, Gala Hispanic Theater, South Coast Repertory, La Jolla Playhouse, Cleveland Playhouse, Milagro Theater, Teatro Vista, and many, many more. But that's not all. Her numerous <laughs> awards include the Francesca Primus Prize, the New Voices Award, the USA Artist Fellowship, National Latino Play Award, and the Helen Hayes Award for Outstanding New Play. She is the founder of Young Playwrights Theater, an award-winning theater company that teaches playwriting in local public schools in Washington, DC. YPT won the 2010 National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award from the White House as one of the most <laughs> As one of the most innovative arts programs in the nation, Karen was the first playwright in residence at Arena Stage and has taught playwriting at Georgetown University. I first had the pleasure of meeting Karen when I was a dramaturg on a stage reading of her beautiful play, Mariela in the Desert, at the Hispanic Playwrights Project at South Coast Repertory. Years later, I wrote about Karen's marvelous work in my book, The Fornes Frame, that explores the legacy of Maria Irene Fornes and the work of five Latina playwrights. Karen's extraordinary plays explore a wide range of topics, including Mexican artists in the 1950s, Mexican nuns in the 17th century, telenovela narratives, gardens that become borders, devoted book clubs, remarkable female scientists, and many, many more. And her plays offer a vibrant exploration, a complex vision, and a profound illumination of the multi-layered Latine, Latinx experience. When Karen was at Arena Stage as playwright in residence, she met with David Dower and Pete Carl, who were then leading the American Voices New Play Institute at Arena. And she suggested that the idea of having a small group of Latinx theater artists come together to form a focus group to talk about the ways to move the dialogue in our field forward around, issues of, around the issues facing Latinx theater artists. So, in early 2012 in April, I was fortunate to receive an email from P. Carl accompanying of the invitation from Karen, and I quote, amigos and amigas, as we all know, a series of events in the last year, several in my hometown of DC, have made it clear that there is still a lot of ground we need to cover, and it sparked some important conversation. I wonder what would happen if we got a small group together to see what we can build, talk, discuss, tear into if we are in a room together. How do we get more authentic work by diversity of voices in our Latino community on our stages? How can we support each other in taking risks? How and what do we write? What plays do we dream of directing? What are the real and unreal obstacles? What can we do to prompt, connect, or enhance the local national dialogue into something that translates into action on stage? I would love to organize a small focus group to talk a calzón quitado, about the challenges and possibilities of being us in the US. We will talk, eat, drink, and get to know each other better, and let's see what happens, unquote. So, on May 18th and 19th, 2012, Karen, along with David Dower, Pete Carl, Jimmy Galoon, Kevin Becerra, and others welcomed eight of us to Arena Stage. Over two days, Karen convened a calzón quitado conversation, a bold, honest, unsparing discussion where we connected, reflected, dined, dreamed, and planned what would become the Latinx theater commons that in the subsequent decade has updated the narrative of Latino theater, Latina theater, Latinx theater, Latina theater, and transformed the field in marvelous ways. Karen's act of generosity began this movement, 
She is the reason we are here today. So please, help me give a warm LTC welcome to our colleague, our founder, my querida amiga, Karen Zacarias. First of all, I can't tell you how nice it is to be alive in a room with live people. Thank you for being in the circle with us today. Um, we all look hotter and sexier and more fun than we did 10 years ago. And, uh, and whoa, see? And, and, and I'm so happy to welcome all the new people here uh, to keep building. It's so nice to hear that. It feels like uh, an imposter syndrome because you asked me what was my entry point into the LTC. It was an imposter syndrome. I was uh, one day, Arena Stage reached out to me. I'd been working with Young Playwrights Theater. I'd done some work with them. And they said, we're going to have five playwrights in residence. Here are the other four fabulous people who've done all this stuff in New York and da 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 and blah, blah, blah. And we'd like to invite you. Um, and I was like, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I was like, shit. Um, um, because I wasn't just going in as a playwright. I was going in as a Latina playwright. I was going in as a local playwright. And I was going in as a mother. Um, and all of a sudden, I felt this tremendous amount of responsibility. And I don't know if it's the Catholic upbringing or the fact that my father's no longer Catholic and now is an activist, which is maybe worse, because um, his idea was always, it doesn't matter if you're happy, is if you're useful. So how do you do, how when you get something, do you multiply? He works in public health, so it's never just about the individual. It's always about how do you do the most good for the most people? But that's hard if you're an artist, right? Because you have an individual voice. So trying to, to, trying to measure that together, the idea of that maybe it's selfish to tell one story, and how do you tell it in a different way? How do you walk through knowing who you are and having a responsibility to your community? It's not an easy issue. And I like messy things. And so the first thing I did when I became part of the uh, uh, Mellon Foundation is all these other playwrights were like traveling to Greece and doing research and all of that. And the first thing I said is, I need to become a better at my craft. So the first year, the, they gave us a little bit of money. I used that to rewrite every single play I had already written. I was like, if I'm getting this focus, I cannot let people down. I have to try to be as good as I am at my craft. Uh, the second one is I started writing plays that be, later on became Destiny of Desire and Native Gardens and The Age of Innocence, strangely enough, um, were the beginning of the sparks of that. And the third one, when I had that money, is when I was looking around, the community is like, what, how do I feel? I go, I'm pretty, feel pretty isolated. And I see there's pockets of people in different places of the country. And HHP was gone. Um, there were so many things, that were, the brown swan had been taken away. I had not seen people that I'd met and had support, been part of my network in years because there was no way of gathering us. It was, it, the, there was a certain power with that. And so I had been given this opportunity that taught me three things. I had a little bit of money. I had a little bit of access. And now what was important was to open that door as widely as possible. So I talked to Jamie and David and all of them. And I remember it, it didn't go the first time. It was like, oh, that sounds complicated. There's a lot. There was a lot of things going on. And, uh, and, uh, and they go, what exactly would be happening? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, because I don't feel I can set the agenda. Like, what I do think is there's an American concept of build and they will come. What happens if we turn that around? Come and let's build together. Um, because I don't know, I only have questions, I had no answers. And what we did sit down and talk about is that we wanted to reach people who um, maybe we've never met, and we really wanted to have representation, regional representation from all the different parts of the country. That was really important. And we only had like $15,000, which was the money which was my workshop and what had been matched with the Mellon Foundation. So I gave my money for my workshops into the pot, the Mellon, matched it and said, how, how many people can we fly in and put in hotels and feed with this amount of money? And it was eight. 
And so that's what we did. We picked, we just, and it wasn't easy. It was random. It was that type of thing. It was really just trying to have um, uh, gender represented, all types of things. And we came in, and sure enough, hablamos hasta el calzón quitado. And uh, you don't speak Spanish like that's to speak without your underwear on. And that means that you just talk without fear, without repercussion about what the possibilities were. And what was really exciting, and then we'd seen it before in different meetings that we had, was there's always been a, uh, an energy. But then we go back to our, where we are and we get overwhelmed by our work, our families, and other things like that. And we had this kismet of being with HowlRound that was giving and an, um, that had a structure that we could lean into. And it became a, a magical moment of two organizations who were birthing at the same time to lean on each other with, their, with our ideas and their structure. And that's what I became the beginning. That was my entry point into the LTC. And it has changed my life. It has changed my friendships. It has broadened our, our world. And so from a personal point of view, really, I just started this to make more friends. And so thank you so much for becoming my friends. And I just wanted to read before I left um, a poem of, that I, it's one of my favorite poems, and I think it will hopefully guide us through this. And this is from James Baldwin. The longer I live, the more deeply I learn that love, whether we call it friendship or family or romance, is a work of mirroring and magnifying each other's light. Gentle work, steadfast work, life-saving work. In those moments where life and shame and sorrow occlude our own light from our view. But there's still a clear-eyed loving person to beam it back. In our best moments, we are that person for another. So remember, we are a circle. We're beaming. It's not a pyramid. We're breaking different paradigms. I see you, and I hope you guys see each other. Thank you for inviting me here today. Should we all take a breath? Let's all take a breath. OK. Ready? Thank you all. Um, all right, I'm going to continue moving us along and also say that we are live streaming opening ceremonies and sometimes we're speaking a little bit too fast for our interpreters. Um, so we want to make sure to just speak a little bit slower so that um, those who have those access needs uh, while we're live streaming and the interpreters can make sure they're interpreting everything we're saying. Um, all right, Clyde, I see you. I was like, where did you go? Um, it is now uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, three of the 2013. And also say that we are live streaming opening ceremonies, Whoa. and sometimes we're speaking a little bit too fast for our. Interpreters. We're also on a 20 second um, delay. So we want to make are we good? Am I good? I'm going to keep going. Um, so Olga Sanchez Salvait is the assistant professor of theater at Middlebury College and the co-artistic director of the Dog Team Theater Project. And she's the artistic director emerita of Milagro and artistic advisory board member of PICT International Classic Theater. Clyde Valentin, who is here in person with us today, is a creative producer, cultural entrepreneur and strategist, and most recently, he co-founded One Nation, One Project, which is a national arts and health project inspired by the WPA's federal theater program. Back in 2013, uh, Olga, Clyde, and Kinan Valdez, who may be joining us shortly, um, asked these three questions to the conveners. 
Why are we here? How did we get here? And where are we going? And those are the questions that uh, formulated throughout the time together in 2013. So today, we've asked them this question. What have you seen happen in Latina theater from 2013 to now? Clyde, take us away. What's up, Olga? Can you hear me? Thumbs up? I got to stand next to you in the camera, yeah? I'm going to do this. Look. <laughs> Good to see you, Olga. Um, so what have I seen? First of all, my name is Clyde Valentin. My pronouns are he, him, and his. And um, I came into the LTC by way of invitation from, I believe, two of the eight, Karen, who called me. Uh, Christopher Diaz, who has uh, never come to a meeting or anything <laughs> since in the, I think in the 10 years. Shout out to Chris. I love Chris. Uh, and Kinan Valdez, uh, who were like, there's this uh, thing happening in Boston. You got to come to it. Uh, Chris particularly was adamant about that, I remember. And, um, you know, uh, the, the rest is history. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, so many wonderful, um, incredible human beings, some of who are with us in this room, some of whom are no longer with us, but are with us. Um, so what have I seen over the last uh, 10 years? Uh, there was a moment at the very end of uh, that first convening. Um, we had a similar wall like this against this wall. And, you know, it was a very organic timeline that we collectively populated based upon, you know, our respective histories of uh, Latinx theater. And um, Luis Valdez was sitting next to his wife, Lupe, and uh, uh, Kinan's dad. And he said something at the very end of the convening that I remember vividly. Um, I still am in that room to some degree, some respect. And he said, we are the American theater. We are the American theater. And um, it was this expansiveness. He wasn't just talking about the United States. He was talking about the Western Hemisphere. He was talking about the plurality of our identities and our experiences and our cultural backgrounds. Um, and what I've seen over the last 10 years with respect to the LTC and to the growth of this is that we have only doubled down on that reality. We are the past, the present, and the future all at once at the same time, period, point blank, punto. The LTC as a national movement in the American theater has no rival in producing leadership, especially leadership amongst our sisters, right? And a pipeline of creation simply unparalleled. It's safe to say that our funders and our investors have received a pretty good return on investment and uh, probably owe us a little more money still. <laughs> so for y'all carrying it forward, hold that, right? Come with the IOUs and the invoices and the bills. Um, I'm gonna share a little something. and I know I have five minutes, so I'm gonna be brief. There's a uh, piece I read recently by uh, Miriam Kaba and Kelly Hayes, uh, from, who are both exceptional organizers, uh, from a piece called How Much Discomfort is the Whole World Worth? <laughs> Bear with me, y'all. I don't, I don't have everything on my phone. Where's my phone? Oh, it's right here. Okay. <laughs> so... Organizing is not a process of ideological matchmaking. Most people's politics will not mirror our own, 
and even people who identify with us strongly on some points will often differ sharply on others. When organizers do not fully understand each other's beliefs or identities, people will often stumble and offend one another, even if they earnestly wish to build from a place of solidarity. Efforts to build diverse intergenerational movements will always generate conflict and discomfort. But the desire to shrink groups down to spaces of easy agreement is not conducive to movement building. And LTC represents this effort and this energy of sitting often in discomfort or disagreement or people we don't necessarily like <laughs> and still believe in because it is bigger than ourselves. And we are all called to service in some way, shape, or form. And over the last 10 years, we have represented and ideally continue to represent a effort of true, messy, democratic processes that continue to build leadership and represent America. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Roxanne. But first, oh, we're going to hear from Olga. Yeah. Olga. <laughs> Next. Sorry. Sorry, Olga. Uh, is this me now? Sorry. It's hard to hear, although I was able to hear Clyde really well. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. OK, hi. So. I am Olga Sanchez Saltfight, she, her. I am speaking to you from Endakana, the traditional homelands of the Western Abenaki. Um, this portion is known as Vermont. I'm in Middlebury, Vermont. Um, I was, yeah, whoa. Um, I was invited to serve on the initial steering committee back in 2012. And I served as a co-planner and co-facilitator alongside Clyde and um, Kinan Valdez uh, for the first convening. Uh, my heart is bursting um, at, I've been watching, you know, since the, the stream started on HowlRound, um, and I've, I'm just inspired, and my heart is full. I wish I were there in person. I will be there in person soon. Um, the Latinx Theater Commons has been uh, an amazing journey. I serve on the, um, whatever the other thing is, there's not the steering committee anymore, the advisory um, board, so... Um, Anyway, our circle, our familia. My thoughts were to this question was that one of the things that I've been thinking about is how we as theater makers are collaborators. And as Latine, as Latine, we thrive on, on, on collaboration, on gathering, on celebrating together, on creating together. And um, I think one of the things that was so present when we first gathered um, was the feeling that we were in silos um, in different parts of the country and kind of working without knowing that there was Latine, Latinx, Latina, Latino theater happening in other parts of the country, not really knowing who else was sharing this work. Um, and that the movement, the Latinx Theater Commons, the movement um, has inspired, I think, a greater sense of familia around the country, a greater sense of collaboration, more projects that have brought people to go, yes, let's do that, let's do that. And yes, it times really well with the fact that we have tools that make that kind of communication um, possible, but we're taking it by by the horns and just like, and riding it. It's it's um, it's gorgeous to see. I'm thinking about, um, and, and Ronnie Pinoy, you talked about growing up together. That's what this feels like. Like there's a sense of this, this neighborhood that is coming back together and seeing each other celebrating. And then we'll go back, but then we'll come back. And, and it's just, it's gorgeous. So um, I'm, I'm thinking, yes, about uh, things like productions, about our playwrights just all over the place. I'm thinking about, um, frankly, Octavio Solis and Lisa Fortes. Congratulations, Quijote Nuevo. And where that's popping up all over the country and just going like splash, splash. 
Um, I'm also thinking about collaborations like La Gente. The um, this is the the Latinx Latine Theater Production Network that was created by uh, Tara Houston and Regina Garcia and others um, to uh, put forward the the collection, the assortment, the over 500 um, designers, technicians, uh, stage management folks who um, identify as Latine who who um, want to support that theater making and who build bridges amongst each other to, to, so that they're not just the only one in a production um, and who start working with each other. The Latinx Playwright Circle, launched by Guadalista del Carmen, The Soul Project, launched by Jacob Padron, all of these ways in which collaborations are being formed. I want to shift gears a little bit because the other thing that I've been thinking about is um, that the LTC inspired me to join academia. As many of you know, the LTC has four tenets, um, and one of them is scholarship. The other is convening, art making, and advocacy, the others. Um, but academia was one of them. And when I was kind of thinking about what next, I thought, oh, you know what was missing when I was coming up um, more than 10 years ago um, was anything about Latina theater in the academy and in higher education, never mind high school. Um, so. I, I wanted to go infiltrate. I want. I love this word disruption that's popped up um, in the conversations, and and be part of going going in and saying Latina theater is a thing. And I trust me when I I went to went back to school and sat in a room where they were teaching Latinx theater. That was the name of the course. And students around the room said, "Oh, I didn't know it was a thing." And that my heart went like, what? you know. So I'm I I went okay. I'm doing this. And the thing that I have that I've been inspired by most recently is watching all of this scholarship, scholarship books that um, and yes, there's always been books coming out, but there's just been this deluge of writing. Um, I'm thinking about um, and I have a list. Sorry. Um, Mika Espinosa's monologues for Latino Latina actors, which has amazing histories on our playwrights. It's like 50 playwrights, um, Mika and Cynthia, uh, um, uh, Mika and Cynthia DeCure's scenes for Latinx actors and Latinx actor training. Uh, the, uh, Latinx actor training is, is a collection of essays on what it means to train Latinx actors, to train in the aesthetics. Luis Valdez's book on theater of the sphere, Marisa Chivas's mythic imagination and the actor. Um, of course, the collections of plays, Trevor Buffoni's, Teresa Marrero, Chantel Rodriguez's anthologies that emerged out of the Encuentros. Um, and then there's others, 50 key figures in Latinx and Latin American theater, Carla de la Gata's Latinx Shakespeare, staging U.S. intercultural theater, Patricia Ibarra's Latinx theater in the times of neoliberalism, um, El Profe Jorge Huerta's upcoming biography on Luis Valdez, Dr. Beatriz's Risk's epic two-volume set on the history of Latinx performing arts in the U.S., and then upcoming in Garcia Romero and Brian Herrera's Maria Irene Fornes in context. Um, I, you know, and yes, I'm plugging it, but I don't, I'm not plugging it. It's just, it came out of the LTC, is Noe Montes's and my co edited Rutledge Companion to Latin Theater and Performance. It's 50 chapters written by 50 of us. And it's just this, this sense of, of, of what we can do together is what the LTC has always been about, about us not not owning a thing, but collectively taking, taking ownership of it and saying, yes, I am part of building this with us um, and stepping forward. And, and that has just gone beyond what the LTC does to branch out as a tree might, as a seed, maybe the LTC is a seed and this is a tree that has flowered in so many different ways around the country. And I am excited to come back and Kind of, kind of ground myself again among the community of the familia, in person, and and also to be here in um, uh, virtually in your midst. And so um, I, I think to the question that that started um, the beginning that um, Abigail posed about what are we doing this weekend, and to me my thought was like create more history, envision, and create together the future, a powerful future together. So thanks.
Thank you, Olga. And on that note of scholarship, it is my pleasure to introduce Roxanne Schroeder Arce, the Associate Dean of Fine Arts Education at UT Austin. Thank you, Clyde. And thank you all. I'm so excited to be here with you all. Truly excited. Truly excited to get this mic off from here, <laughs> too. OK. <laughs> So, uh, Roxanne Schroeder Arce, um, I uh, entered, uh, sh she, her, I entered the LTC in 2014, Abigail just told me. So, if you don't know when you entered, ask Abigail because she knows. Uh, at, in LA at the Encuentro. So, um, and I uh, also am on the steering committee, I'm honored to be so, and I was a co champion of uh, the Sin Fronteras festival and convening in Austin, Texas, which is a TYA festival. So some of our TYA folks are in Atlanta right now, but some of TYA folks chose to be here, and I'm grateful that we get to be together. Uh, so I am honored to lead us in a little exercise. So we're going to move a little bit as we are all able uh, and get to know some folks. So that's one of my favorite things about the LTC is getting to know people. And you have some, um, some colors, right? So I love this exercise. So that's a way to get to know each other. Um, and, and yeah, you don't have yours, Abigail? OK. Um, <laughs> we can get them. Uh, so but that's, we're not going to use those right now. But just know that you have those. <laughs> but what we are going to use is. I know what a team. Well, okay, so let's start there then. Turn to someone near you and see if you have a color that matches. Is that play right? Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. I love it. Most people. You can hear my voice say 10. If you can hear my voice, clap four times. Thank you. All right. No one can remember what the colors are, but that's OK. The point is not to know what the colors are. It's to talk to somebody. So that's OK. All right. But now we're going to try something else. So uh, in a moment, we are going to be getting into a circle. And that's, that's going to be one circle. So we're going to start here. And the circle is going to go around the outside. So all around here will be in a circle. And I'm going to give you a specific, hi, oh my goodness. Um, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I feel like I'm playing Duck Duck Goose. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and, uh, and I'll give you a specific order, right, of what we're going to do and how we're going to get into order. Okay? So did Karen leave? She's coming back? Okay. All right, we'll start with a different one then. So this one is we're going to get in alphabetical order by your first name, okay, our first names. And so, for example, Rose and Roxanne, who's, who comes first? Rose, okay. You're good, you're doing great. So we're gonna start here, right? Actually, let's start here. A, if you have an A name, you'll start here, and we're gonna go around, and Z is gonna land right here. So A is here, all the way around to Z. How quickly can we do this? Three minutes. Okay, so Are 
Okay. So come this way, A's. Come this way a little bit. We are now at two minutes. We're at two minutes. Okay, we, we start with Abigail Vega, and we end with Victoria. Oh, okay. You're going to turn to someone near you, and you're going to have a two-minute conversation. Yeah, let's scooch this way just a little bit. Yeah, they're, we're stuck. We got stuck. There's a lot of A's and B's here. I love it. The conversation you're going to have, we get everybody in? Nice big circle. Okay. The conversation is, where does your name come from? How did you get it? How, what is your name? Where did it come from? And you have a two-minute conversation. That means each person gets a minute. Go. That was only one minute. You didn't have time. Do you need another minute? Okay, you two, tell your story. Go ahead. Okay, they did it. Yay. Okay, this next one, we are going to ask Karen to come over. 
And we're going to start with, Karen is going to be right here, right? Karen has been around the LTC the longest. And where's one person who's here for the first time entering LTC? Okay, yes. And you? John. John. Yes. Okay, so John, you're going to come, you're going to come right over here. If, you, if you're new to the LTC, you're going to come around here, right? And we'll be to the folks who've been around for a couple years, longer, right? All the way up to those who were here in Boston with Karen 10 years ago. How quickly can we do this? OK, go. Thank you. OK, so we want to hear how long people have been around. And if we collectively add them up, up at the end, that's going to be amazing. But we won't, probably. So we're going to start with you, John. And what we're going to hear, as requested by Jacqueline, we're going to hear your name, first name, and the year you're entering, right? And that's it. Really quick. Can we do this? Yeah. OK. Sure. John, 2024. Anna, 2024. Blanca, 2024. Carla, 2024. Demian, 2024. Allison, 24. Uh, Till 19, but really 2024. Sandy, three hours ago. <laughs> uh, Marissa, 2024. Eddie, 2024. Graciela, I heard about LTC last year, but this is my first time, so 2024. Sylvia, 2024 by way of 2014. <laughs> Susana, 2024, but I don't know, 2023 last summer, this past summer? Jaime, 2024. Pauline, 2024. Rose, 2024. Monica or Monica, 2024. Rula, 2023. Natty, 2023. Jay-Z, 2022. Becca, 2022. Giancarlo, 2022. 
Fran, 2022. Tessa, 2022. Erisa Ann, 2022, but I feel like there was something before that. <laughs> Juliana, 2021. Laura, 2021. Jacqueline, 2021. Carmen, I'm definitely in the wrong place. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, James, 2019. Christine, uh, 2018, I think. Carnival in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Dylan, 2019, but kind of crashed 2018. It's fine. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was 2019 or 2018. Oh, Maria Tania. <laughs> Andrew, 2018. Benito, 2018. Claudia, 2018. Denise, 2018. Pedro, 2017. Erika, 2017. Mateo, 2017, but I just remembered I wrote something for Cafe Onda in 2016, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Alex, 2017. Victoria, 2017. Patrice, 2016. Damaso, 2016. Megan, 2016. Carlos, 2016. Cristia Milda, 2016. Elisa, 2016. Jorge, 2016. Tony, 2016. Tara, 2015. Crystal, 2015. Joanne, 2015. Carla, 2015. Daphne, 2015 and 2014. 2015 in New York, I got to attend for the first time. 2014, I couldn't attend, but I helped. I was on the steering committee. <laughs> Lorenzo, 2014. Lillian, 2014. Oscar, 2014. Cynthia, 2014. Adriana, 2014. Roxanne, 2014. Miranda, 2013. Abigail, 2013. Alex, 2013. Rose, 2013. Marisa, 2013. Daniel, 2013. Noah, 2013. Micah, 2013. Melinda, 2013. Jorge, 1492. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what you all think. Anthony, 2013. Georgina, 2013. Ivan, 2013. Clyde, 2013. Evelina, 2013. Kevin, 2012. Anne, 2012. Jose Luis, 2012. KZ, 2012. Amazing. All right. Do we have time for one more or should we? A short one. A short one? How do we do a short one? Okay. Uh, who thinks in here that you traveled the farthest to get to this convening? Who thinks it might be you? You did? You did? Where did you come? San Diego? Anyone further than San Diego? San Francisco? Which is farther? Pedro. There you go. I think you might have won. OK. So who's from Mexico City? Did someone travel from Mexico City? No? Anyone travel from Mexico City? No? We heard that there might be. OK. Jose Luis, where did you travel from? Jose Luis, where did you travel from? Well, you won. You won. Amazing. OK, so what we're going to do is the from Norway. Yeah. Yeah, that's farther than. No, it is. I'm like, wow. OK, so you won. All right, so and if you came on the red line, anybody? Blue line? You work in this building. OK, so Kevin, you start here. So Kevin, you're here. And, and Jose Luis, you're there, right? And we're going to go the least amount of travel all the way up to the most traveled. Go.
if you can hear my voice, say hi. hi. Hola. Hola. OK, with your groups that you're near, you're going to make a little conglomerate. And you might be New England. You might be the Boston group. You might be, right? So you're going to make a group, and you're going to decide what's the name of your group. And in a moment, we're just going to hear Boston or New England. And you know, Texas, we have our own group over here. So you have one minute to make your group. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? If you can hear my voice, say LTC. LTC. Medio. Medio. All right. In a moment, we're going to have folks introduce themselves by your group in whatever way you just discussed. So we'll start from the closest. Yeah? Okay. And the rest of us are being really good audience members, aren't we? I think our Boston group is ready to go. And a hush fell over the crowd.
Okay, we have our smallest group here, but mighty, we're listening. And last but not least, nice to get to play with you all. I look forward to getting to know you better this week. Could Roxanne have been anything other than somebody who teaches teachers? <laughs> Unbelievable, Roxanne. Incredible. Thank you so much. Can we sit? Can we, we can sit back down? All right. We yeah. can sit back down, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody take a seat. Checkity check, check, check. Check, check, check. check. They're working. Beautiful. Yeah, great. All right, as we are taking our seats and continuing this magical journey. All right, Natty, take it away. Sure. All right, everybody, while you're having, uh, taking your seats, uh, just introduce myself. My name is Nathaniel Justiniano. I go by Natty. I am one of the co-champions of the host committee here with uh, Kevin. Uh, hey -o. And I'm just going to mention a couple things that we're here for in terms of the host committee. Um, we uh, selected some of the restaurants you'll be going to, including tonight's dinner. Uh, we also are trying, uh, we're working to connect this community with the Boston community. I've been here for six years. How long have you been here? I've been here for just over 10 years. That's right. So uh, we know all the chisme about uh, Boston, uh, where to go, where not to go, where to drink, where to, where to drink, and then where to drink. So you can ask us. Um, at any time if you, if you need anything like where to drink. So sure. um, uh, some of the things uh, to uh, look for in terms of stuff that we prepared for you are two uh, local artist events. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to have a playwright. Um, we're having the Latin, Latin Playwright Initiative uh, in partnership with um, a powerhouse bilingual local company from Chelsea called the Teatro Chelsea. Um, the co-founder of which is right here, JJ. Thank you so much for all your organizing work with us. Also in partnership with that is the Huntington uh, Theater. Um, and we'll be highlighting two playwrights, having amazing food provided by Vejigantes, a local Puerto Rican restaurant. Uh, they're fucking awesome. So yeah, that's right. So uh, come to that. And then on Saturday during the day, we're going to be having some creative workshops with some local uh, Latin uh, artists here in this space and throughout the spaces here. Um, and on Saturday night, a big party um, with music, with a bar, uh, at a place called Chroma, which is an amazing uh, organization just down the street. It's walking slash staggering distance. So um, <laughs> let's, make, uh, let's, make, let's have some good times. I'll pass it over to Kevin. Thanks, Natty. Yep. All right. So my name is Kevin Becerra. He, him. Uh, uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, yeah, as we said around the circle, I was uh, part of the producing team supporting Karen's original meeting in 2012. So it's just really amazing and beautiful to be here. Um, speaking of Boston and Bostonian forces, um, before the 2013 uh, meeting, there was uh, some press to be done to uh, let the Boston scene know that uh, a bunch of crazy people were coming from around the country to discuss Latin theater. Um, I was asked by my new employer, Emerson College at the time, to, um, to do an interview for Boston Neighborhood News 
uh, about this convening. And I was going to be doing it with a local playwright and legend by the name of Melinda Lopez. <laughs> what happened was the most problematic, <laughs> cringy, truly unbelievable, and absolutely hysterical interview that has ever happened. To this day, as I meet people, they will call me and be like, I Googled you, which is so flattering, by the way. <laughs> And they'll say, I Googled you, and I found this insane interview where this old white man asked you and Melinda how you feel about Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> and, and, and he says, he says like, like, Melinda, what does that mean? Like, you write these plays, is it like maids and the I yai yai? Which I'm still trying to figure out what that means. But I received such a lesson in grace and... Uh, stiff upper lip and not committing violence on public television from Melinda Lopez as she paused and said, that's such an interesting question, and engaged this journalist as though he wasn't a completely insane person um, uh, and answered uh, something else. <laughs> so uh, Melinda Lopez is an actor, a playwright, a teacher, a leader, an advocate, a mentor, and a friend. Perhaps you know some of her work, Midnight Sandwich, Media Noche, Sonia Flu, Mala, Yirma, they go on and on and on. Melinda has been uh, a touch point for me since the moment I moved here. Every time we've gotten to collaborate, whether it's a play in this very space or pho just a couple weeks ago around the corner, I become a better person, a more compassionate person, a more lit and on fire person. Those of you who know her know that to be in her presence is to be in the presence of just complete divinity and serenity. So please join me in welcoming into the circle Boston's own Melinda Lopez. Thank you, Kevin. I, compl I completely blocked that out. <laughs> um, completely. Um, and um, funny because I'm talking about memory um, which things I did and did not remember. Um, so, um, um, my name is Melinda Lopez. My pronouns are she, a, yes, series. Uh, and my entry point to, uh, this amazing group was, uh, October 31st, 2013. Um, um, my memory, as I said, is really unreliable, but a few things I remember very clearly. I remember what I wore. Um, multicolored peacock feather dress and thigh-high gray suede boots. I remember I was late, como siempre. Um, I remember the altar, which was covered with uh, rebosos, fotos, flores, programs, books, a glass of rum. I brought a handful of basil, porque I couldn't get yerba buena. Uh, and I remember Josefina Lopez put um, um, a beautiful uh, Milagro, a sacred heart at the center, which symbolized, I thought, our pasión, our corazones, our sangre. Um, I remember standing in a lot of circles, dancing, stretching, howling, crying, singing, and circles within circles, and post-it notes all along this wall. I think it was this wall, right? Um, all this back wall, every single color that a post-it note is made in was on that wall, like a million little flags saying, estamos aquí, we're here. Um, I remember meeting Jorge Huerta, who I had only known from college textbooks in the flesh, y tan handsome. Um, I remember the invocation by uh, Luis Valdez, who inspired me to write plays. Uh, and Jose Luis Valenzuela, who was over the regional theater insisting that we can't wait, we need our own theaters. I shared, sorry, I have a cough drop because I'm, yeah. Um, uh, I shared the room with Luis Alfaro and Diane Rodriguez, rest in power. And was Richard Montoya actually rapping with Juan Amador? <laughs> and mira, mira, por ahí está Medalia Cruz and Caridad Savich and uh, Kinan Valdez. And so many of you in the room now, we're here. And then friends, I reconnected with Juliet Carrillo and Las Sandras from Chicago, Marquez and Delgado, um, Marisa Chivas and Daniel Jaques and La Divina, Karen Zacarias. 
And so many names I heard for the first time. Noé Montes, and Brian Herrera, and Lisa Portes, and Georgina Escobar, and Stephanie Ivara, and Jacob Padron, folks who are leading the way now, and names I'm so happy to speak out loud to you now. I remember Dania Serracho asking, as we sat in circles within circles, yes, but how do you make money? <laughs> how do you afford? How do you afford to stay in the theater, right? And then I remember Octavio Solis saying, marry a lawyer. <laughs> now, did I dream that I was in the room with Octavio Coco Solis and la showrunner Tania Vida Serracho? I don't know if that was a dream or not. Um, after lunch on the second day, we were invited to form a group based on how long we'd been working in the theater. If you were under five years, five to 10, 10 to 15, et cetera, we were supposed to join the group that most closely aligned with our time in the field. But where to start? I, I, I can't remember that there wasn't a time in my life where this wasn't the only thing I wanted to do. After school, I used to go door to door in my neighborhood, knocking on doors saying, do you want to see a play? And then I would make up something, which was probably my first solo show. Um, uh, but I asked for a payment in cookies. So when did, did my career start? When I, the maids and gypsies that I played in college, or the time that I was told by a producer that I would never play Ibsen because I was too Latina, but I auditioned anyways. Or the day I wrote my first monologue or taught my first class or the first residual check I cashed. So I finally chose when I got my equity card. And this put me in a circle with Irma Mayorga and Luis Alfaro and Josefina Lopez, and I am definitely in the wrong circle. I don't know what I'm doing here. What can I possibly offer these titans of the American theater? I'm scared about the future. I'm scared I have no talent. I am scared I am an imposter, that I'm not Latina enough to be in this room, but I'm not American enough to thrive outside this room. I haven't done anything, but I am a good listener, and I listened. On the last day, I got assigned a Loteria card, and it hung on my office wall at, at the Huntington for many years until during one of several office moves, it was transpapelado. Um, but I remember it was the card of connection, and my assignment was to make connections, lift up others, connect people, actors, designers, directors, and always have a Latine playwright, scholar, actor, producer, student, right at the tip of my tongue to speak into the room. If I'm in the room where things happen, that that's my charge. And, and, it, and it's yours. I pass it on to you. You'll get your own Loteria card, but it's yours too. Um, uh, my insecurity, my fear, lack of faith, it doesn't matter if I hang on to the importance of lifting all of you up. So my memory is not so good. I remember the first day of our convening, there was a blizzard, and that's why I was late. But the snow was beautiful, and there were huge flakes falling slowly, and the city was quiet, and I remember it so clearly. And Boston is really pretty in the winter, in the snow. So I thought I would read you the weather report from that day. So I, I Googled it. And in fact, there was no snow. It was a totally normal day. It was like <laughs> mid-50s. It was a, a good day for trick-or-treating. So maybe none of this actually happened. <laughs> and maybe I, I totally dreamed it. Um, at the, towards the end of our last day, we took apart the altar. Folks took back their sacred objects. And as I was getting my bag ready to leave, Josefina Lopez found me. Um, and uh, she, she took my arm and um, she handed me her sacred heart, her corazón sangriante, sangriante. And she said, I think you should have this. And she put it in my hand. I think that's what happened. But um, here it is. So, bienvenidos a Boston.
Bendición a todos. I hope you have an amazing time. Um, muchas gracias. Thank you, Melinda. What a beautiful way to close out our opening ceremonies. Um, I do want to mention that we've heard from several folks uh, bringing names of people who have passed on, and we are going to have a time to uh, remember those people at closing ceremonies. So I just want to name that we are not have not forgotten them, and we're going to continue to bring up their names throughout the weekend and then also have a specific time during closing ceremonies to remember them as well. Um, so now we're going to have a 10-minute break, um, and we're going to come back into this room and take a look at this timeline behind me and the work we've uh, done and the fill in the last 10 years. So this is your 10-minute. Thank you. <laughs>